Welcome to the Brightmove SourceJet tutorial video. In today's video, we're going to cover the SourceJet sourcing tool, what it is, how to access it, and how to use it. So to begin with, when you first log into your Brightmove account, you'll be brought to your dashboard screen. And you can hover over your candidates module to see the different options here. And underneath these options, we have an other tasks area. And you'll want to select the sourcing link. Now the SourceJet tool will be the last tool listed. And to begin using it, simply click Start Sourcing. The tool is comprised of different tabs. and They run along the top here. You can see we have searches, our sources, and several different searching tabs available. Now by default, you're going to open into your searches tab. And if you haven't run one yet, this will be empty. For any searches you've done in the past, those will be displayed. And you can see the name, search terms, their status, any messages added, start date, end date, the results link, and the sources that were chosen. Now for your actions list, you have the ability to run the search again, to edit the search, to copy the search, to delete the search from your list, or to view the search results. You also have the ability to search within your, your saved searches. So if you're looking for a particular one, you could search specifically for that. And just remember to clear out this search box anytime you want to see the full list again. And lastly, we have the ability to refresh our searches. And when we run the search in just a minute, uh, once it starts to run, we can actually click this until we see a complete in our results list. All right, once you leave your searches tab, the first tab over is your sources. Now, by default, this is going to open to an all sources listing. But you can set these apart by either the free sources or the login required sources by selecting the blue buttons here on the right. You may also search the source list for a particular keyword or source that you may be looking for. So for instance, if you're looking for healthcare specific sources, you could type in the word health, and that's going to filter down those search sources uh, based off of that keyword. Now the columns are going to list the name of the sources. If there is a login required, you will see a check mark here. The category that this belongs to, the group that it belongs to, its max results listing that it will provide, and whether or not it is free. If you see a check mark in the free column, that indicates it is also a free site. Now the actions list, you'll see there will be a blue button. And that blue plus sign is going to be for adding a source. So anywhere where you see this blue plus sign, you'll need to actually add the source before you can use it. So if you would like to use something like allhealthcarejobs.com, for instance, a login is required, which means you'll need to actually have uh, credentials for that site. So you'll need a membership on that site. And you'll need to use the action button here on the right to add that source in. So the first step, if you don't already have one, would be to go to All Healthcare Jobs website and register. Once you have your login credentials, you can come back into your Brightmove source listing, go to the action list button here, select add source, and then use your credentials for allhealthcarejobs.com for your username and password that matches for that account, and then set a day limit for the amount of time you want these credentials to be good within the source jet tool. Now, I usually recommend uh, 30 to 90 days for these. So that's how you can set up your different sources within the system. You can go in and keep adding sources as needed. OK, our next tab over is the detailed search. So this is going to begin our actual search tabs. The next four tabs are all search related. Now, the detailed search enables you to search a wide range of criteria, and it searches against recruiting.com's website along with a handful of other sites that you can enable, like Monster and Career Builder. Now what composes the detailed search, and we're going to start from the top and go down, we have our search help. You can hover over this button at any point to get an overlay of exactly what the search criteria you can use, examples. Uh, so if you're looking, for instance, for nursing practitioners, there's examples for that in here. And you can see different examples of how to put in your search terms. But the green areas are required, so you have to fill out at least a search title and the search terms. So we'd want to fill out a title here and put in our terms. Now you're going to want to use quotation marks here if you're using a uh, phrase. So if it's two words that need to be used together as a phrase, you'll want to use uh, quotations. You need to separate keywords by a comma space. And if you're using just a single keyword, you can just type that out without the quotation marks. 
And again, if you need any help with examples of how to put these in, the search help button is available on this page. Now the rest of the information can be filled out. Uh, like I said, the detailed search has a wide range of criteria that you can ask for, so you can get very specific with this particular search. So fill out any of the information as you need to, and then select your websearchbyrecruiting.com source. This is the main source for this detailed search. And you'll notice that we have several letters uh, in categories here. To understand what each one of these are, they represent fields that are required for certain uh, sources. This one has a Z checked. Well, what does Z mean? Well, Z, if we hover over feature, we'll see a full list of what the uh, letters mean. And Z stands for zip code slash radius detail. So for the detailed search, not only do you need to have your title and your search terms, but you do need to put in a zip code and put in a radius around that zip code. So these two things are required for the detailed search. So that way your source yet search doesn't error out. But once you have your search terms, your title, your zip code, and your radius, and any of the other information that you want to fill out, just make sure that you've bubbled in the select button for websearchbyrecruiting.com, and then click the save search button to actually start running this search. All right, our next tab over is the search pay sites tab. This is going to allow you to search against any pay sites that you pay to search for resumes within. So if you already are paying to search on any of these sites, you can actually run those searches within SourceJet right here. So if you see any of your paid sites within our source list, and you can use the buttons down here at the bottom to go through the different pages, or use the search bar at the top to view any of the sources you want to filter down for. Again, the green fields are required. So for this particular search, you need a title and search terms. There are fewer criteria to search for, as this is not the detailed search. And what you want to do is fill out your title and your search terms, fill out any of your other information as you want, and then again, select your sources that you want to search against. So anywhere where you see login required, that source needs to be set up in your sources listing. Again, we have our letter index here. And since none of these have any extra requirements, all we need to do is just fill out the two green fields listed above and then click Save Search to let the search run. The next tab over is our Free Sites tab. And this is going to allow you to search from a number of free sites, resume banks, college sites, and web community resource uh, resume pages. So again, your required fields are going to be that title and search terms. If you need help on how to fill those out, the help button is available here as well. And you'll want to select a category. So if you want to search free internet resume banks, pick this one, college sites, or web community resume pages. You'll want to update these to update the sources down at the bottom. So as you'll notice, as I select each one of these, my source listing here at the bottom will update. So if we're looking for free internet resume banks, uh, we'll fill out any of our information. And then again, uh, just like on our other pages, we'll bubble in the sources that we want to use. Again, if they have a login required checked, we'll need to go to our source list to make sure we actually have that filled in. And then we'll want to make sure that none of the other fields are required, which none of these are. And once ready, we can go ahead and click Save Search. And finally, we have Search the Web. And Search the Web is actually going to allow you to search the open web for resumes based off of the key terms that you put in. So again, our required fields are our title and our key term search. And we're going to go ahead and run one of these in the open web just to show you how the search pulls, what your options are, and what you can do once you have uh, resumes that have been pulled up. So we'll put in our title. This is a demonstration title. And let's say we're an IT company and we're looking for someone who has support and information technology on their resume. So we'll type in the word support, do a comma space, and since information technology is a phrase, I'll put that in quotation marks. Now the category listing for this is only going to be resume, so you don't need to worry about that. But you can set your state, country, max resume days. Usually the default max resume days old is fine. This is going to go back three months. Um, but you can set it a little longer if you would like. Now for this, we have different web outlets that we can search for. And I'm going to choose all the web, Google, and Yahoo. So this is going to search those three sites 
for my keywords and try to pull resumes based off of that section. So I've got everything I need. I've bubbled all of my sources. I have my search terms, search title. There are no extra required fields. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save Search. Now when I run this search, it's automatically going to take me back to my Searches tab. I can see that the search has been created. I have the name of the search, its terms, and all the rest of the information. At this point, it's status pending. Well, if I want to see if the status has changed, I can now use my refresh link here in the right. And now I'll see that it's running. So while it's running, if I wanted to, I could go and search other free sites. I could go into my source listing and check my sources, add new sources in. Uh, but eventually, I'll want to go back to my search listing and refresh until this goes into a completed state and I'm given my results listing. All right, so we'll go ahead and refresh and we see that we've completed. Now depending on how many sources you chose, how many keywords and key phrases you put in, the time that it takes the system to actually run through and find all the different resumes can vary. Uh, so if you see it still in the running status, feel free to go and work within your Brightmove account and come back. And when you click the refresh button, when it's finished, you'll have a completed status. You'll be able to see the start and end time for that and your results list. So for our open web search, we just search for support and information technology. And we have 21 results from these different sites. Now for our action list, we have the ability to run the search again. We can edit the search, delete it. Or now that we actually have results, we can click the view results link. Now this is going to give us several options. At the top you're going to see your search details. So we have our search name, the category we used, its location, and the search terms. We have the ability to import in and create these candidate profiles right into the system. And then we can also add them to a new folder by selecting new folder here in the options and putting in a folder name. We can select existing and choose from a folder that's already in existence in the account. And lastly, what we can do is we'll go through and we'll actually review these resumes and select who we want to upload into our Brightmove account. So I'll go ahead and start with the top person here. We'll click Review, and we can go through and actually see the resume that was pulled. And it will highlight any keywords that we use to pull this particular resume. So Support was listed once here, and I can scroll through each one of my people to find out what their information is, why they were selected, and if I want to use them, I'll click Mark for Import. Now this will allow me, as I mark these, to go ahead and check the boxes beside their names. So as I find good uh, applicants, I will mark them. And then once ready, I'll close my window out. I can see that the three people that I liked are marked for Import. And I'll select Import Resumes. So the system will then take those resumes, and since I picked a folder, it's going to go ahead and move them into the folder as well. But I now have links also to my new candidate profiles where I can view all three of my new candidates who have been built from the resumes I just imported. Now I'll also note that the resume listings are no longer available for those three people. They've been removed, so that way you don't have to worry about accidentally sending in the same person twice. And you do have other options as well. So let's say we've selected three more people we do have our choose action list. So if you want to import someone in, have their candidate profile be created, and submit them to a job at the same time, you can do so using the choose action for list drop down menu to find the correct job to submit them to. Now this is going to list the most recent jobs available, but if you want to search your entire database, you can use the last option, which is import profile and search and submit to job. So you have several options here. You can either just import them directly into your database, import them into your database and organize them into a folder, or import them into your database, submit them to a job, and also put them in a folder, or just import them and submit them to a job. So you have a lot of different options within this screen. But just remember, you do have the option to view those resumes, so that way you can uh, do a little screening, find out who you really want, Using your resume uh, tools here at the top, you can go through each one of the ones on the page. And if you'd like someone, instead of dropping it, uh, the window and checking them, you can just click the Mark for Import. 
Now you do have a show limit, uh, so we're only showing 10 on this page, but I have 18 people total, so I can set this higher than that number, and I'm going to have everyone all on the same page now. So that's important to note, so that way you keep everybody on the same page. Through your view screen here, it doesn't just wrap back up to the top. All right, so that's going to conclude our SourceJet tutorial. Uh, we've seen what the different sourcing sections are, how to use them, how to set up those sources, how to run a web search, and then what to do when you actually have your results. So if you have any questions based off of the SourceJet tool, please feel free to reach out to our support staff using the help link here, either for live chat or to set a ticket in with your question. Thanks, and have a great day.